everybody welcome back this is inside fitness radio presents total fitness podcast i'm one of your hosts matthew I'm walter today we're talking about being clean staying clean and no i'm not necessarily talking about sobriety even though it sounds like it might it does kind of relate to that though what we are talking about is the idea that people complain that they have to work out every day they have to take care of their health every day they have to diet and eat healthy foods every day and at the same time you could just use the phrase or you could just say to somebody well, you don't shower once and stay clean forever. You have to keep showering or you have to keep brushing your teeth for the teeth and your body to stay fresh and clean. So we're going to get into a little bit about that today, a little bit of a fun one. And uh, Walter, start us off. What's it take to be clean? Well, since we're not talking about the other thing. Oh, um... we can, but. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so I'm, I'm going to put it to you this way. When I got clean and sober, it was all about doing 90 meetings in 90 days. It was about creating habits. And really, when you think about being clean, it's not, well, my teeth are going to get dirty after my next meal. It's about our parents have built us a habit through our lives of doing that thing. So after I eat, I brush my teeth. After I get up in the morning and get rid of the waste products, I take a shower, you know, all those things become habits in life and health, fitness, eating properly are habits that have to be continued and practiced every day. Mm -hmm. I think. Yeah, absolutely. When people think of fitness or health or going to the gym, I, I think people will look at it as a goal instead of building up a habit. They'll look at the end goal. They'll look at the end results or whatever it might be. We get tons of people coming to us as clients saying, the first thing I want to do is I want to lose 30 pounds. Like there's nothing else to it. It's just, I want to lose 30 pounds. And then we, we break it down a bit. It's like, why, why do you want to lose those 30 pounds? What is stopping you from losing those 30 pounds? You ask all these questions, you kind of break it down. The final, and, or the final answer to that question isn't necessarily like, I want to lose 30 pounds because I just want to lose 30 pounds really, they just want to get rid of bad habits that are causing them to feel bad about themselves, have low energy, maybe not be as strong as they want to get. And they want to focus on some other things. And the byproduct is just, okay, they end up losing the 30 pounds as well. And it's just a nice little cherry on top. Mm -hmm. But yeah, you said it perfectly. I mean, we're we're talking about staying clean, but in reality, it's just habit building here. (laughs) Exactly. But it's it's funny, you know, I I, I may be treading on dangerous ground here. But, you know, as as soon as you started talking about the the questions we ask people, Mm-hmm. I start to think about manipulation. Oh, yeah. Dig down deeper. Find out what's really driving them so you can get them to sign on the dot. Yeah, point, that pain point. Which I... That is, is difficult. Find the pain point. But finding the pain point in terms of helping people mm-hmm. to solidify what it is that they want and solidify the methodology of getting them there yeah. is not a bad thing. Yeah, and that's a, a that's a good uh, way of doing doing. It. Yeah, because you're always taught, especially if you worked at big box gym that Canada is very known for living a great. Can I even say the second word? Anyways, <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, the main goal as a trainer there is not to be a trainer; it's to be a salesperson, and that yeah. really hurts both. It rubs and, both. And I, you know, really I, I don't want to put down the corporation. I think that's the way it is in most big box gyms. Oh yeah. It's they have that huge gym. rent to spend. They have all that stuff to go on my own now. Yeah. I have rent to pay, but I, I, I can pay for it all by myself. Yeah. I don't have to worry about must bring in more, must bring in more, must bring in more. And therefore it, it's, it's an easy thing. And if I don't sell, I go, Okay. Well, it's also, you can just refer that person to the right person. Maybe, maybe they aren't yeah. the right fit for you and, and that's it. But yeah, um, yeah that those are, those, those are always the questions that you have to ask. And it's like, as the person answering, even if, even if you don't have a trainer, let's just say you're going to the gym, you have to answer those questions. Nonetheless, you have to really ask yourself, especially if you are going into the gym and it's been three, four months and you have made zero progress. Like I'm talking, you know, you're barely even getting stronger. You're barely even lifting more weight. Your cardio is still pretty bad. You can still barely even walk up the stairs. Like those kind of things. That's when it's time to ask yourself, what am I really doing this for? 
because honestly, like losing weight is not a good enough reason to take a shower every day. Again, I say that in quotations. It's not a good enough reason. To, uh, it's not a good enough why to continue that habit. Sometimes you have to make up a habit or you, excuse me, you have to make up a why as to continue that habit. Sometimes, you know, in the gym, like, and I remember when I was younger, my why was so I could get the girl. Hmm. And was that actually the reason why? Absolutely not. But it was the one that hurt the least. <laughs> it was the one I was willing to admit to people when in reality it was like, I'm being bullied. I don't like it. <laughs> yeah. You're not going to, you're going to look at, look at your dysmorphia and yeah. tell the world about that's why. Yeah, exactly. Right. Know, or bullying. I mean, all so. those, those things, but even, you know, and it's interesting that bullying comes in here because uh, even guys that I've, I've met who've come to the gym in their late thirties for the first time. If you track back enough, there's often that bullying that happened when they were kids. Mm that creates a direct line to where they are now, why they look the way they look now, what habits they built up, all those things, you know, and, and, and it's difficult then to change the habit. Yeah. That's our job. It's worthwhile to change it. And you just have to do it small enough chunks again to make it work. Yeah. So sometimes going to the gym isn't the way sometimes going for a walk every day is that starting for the first point? six months. Is that starting to go to the gym? But nobody wants to hear that. And I think, I think that's what we have to address today is like, again, when you, let's take, uh, let's take brushing your teeth, for example, how many people probably actually floss 10% of the population less yeah. than that. Come on, let's be realistic. Right. But let's say you go to your dentist and your dentist is like, Walter, you need to floss and use mouthwash every morning and night for the rest of your life. Otherwise your teeth are going to fall out. If you miss one day, two days, whatever, right? You're probably going to do it because it scares you. Mm, mm. But it's going to be really freaking Speaking hard. Speaking from absolute personal knowledge, I was told I need to do salt, salt washes. Okay. I never yeah. did it. Yeah. I never did it. I mean, I upped my flossing, I upped my water pick usage, but I didn't do that one extra thing because it was like another thing. Yeah. Right. So but I know what I'm going to hear next time I go to the dentist. Is that, is that, and it's like, yeah. take it, let's say you're somebody who only ever brushes their teeth and your dentist tells you, you have to now brush your teeth. You have to floss, you have to use mouthwash and you have to use a salt water treatment two times a day. Nobody's going to follow that. Maybe they'll follow it for the first day and then they're going to follow up all of it. If you just come in and you're like, you know what, let's start with a toothbrush. And I'll start with the mouthwash. You're way more likely to take it. And then it's like the next time you go in four, six months later, your dentist is like, you know, there's a little bit of improvement. Let's add that flossing in now. Okay. One more, one more extra thing. And within fitness that, with, yeah. with getting clean, with, with staying in this, this realm of building that habit up, you know, of, of doing it day after day, you don't just jump in head first to the deep end. If you've never swam before you stay in the shallow water, you learn how to tread water. You learn how to do your front stroke. You learn how to do your backstroke. And then, yeah, then once you feel a little more comfortable, you can move in, maybe dip your head under the water and then you can start going. And then now you're in the deep end. You're diving off the board. That's it. Yeah. But people don't want to look at it that way. They want to just go head first. It, it's interesting because sometimes you have to work backwards as well. I mean, I know I had a hard time with breakfast. I would, if I got up on time, I could have a good, do my oatmeal and do the whole thing. But if I didn't get up on time, if I slept that extra 10 minutes late, then screw it i don't have time have a coffee go to work right? mm -hmm. so then i started making my breakfast at night before i go to bed so i set out the oatmeal i set out everything i add the liquid and i let it sits overnight and it prepares that way with a cover it was a pain in the ass <laughs> to get my, to put my bite take my vitamins i might forget to take my vitamins so now i have a sake dish a sake bowl cup oh. that goes on top of the glass uh, on top of the plate with the oatmeal on it and all my vitamins go in there. Yeah. So now press the coffee machine button, take the glass of water from last night, take the pills, call, go done. Okay. Put them aside. Now take the oatmeal, put it in the microwave. Boom. Boom. By the time the oatmeal is done, the coffee is done. Everything's poured and I'm sitting down and ready to go. Oh, and I've prayed in the meantime while everything was brewing right yeah yeah so 
if you build the habits that way, it can be very helpful. It's well, just, you, are you going to prep everything that way? Well, that's it. What you're talking about there, and again, this relates back to just kind of everything, is you have a plan. You have your you have your reasoning of, like, I need to make sure I eat breakfast because I got a long day ahead. You know, I, I have a long day. I have four clients in a row. Then I have to do a workout, and I have no time to eat at any point. So it's like, I need to make sure I eat. That's your why. So how did you plan around it? And you figured out what works. Yeah. We get so many people coming to the gym that are like, I just want to go head first in four days a week, five days a week, because that's what so-and-so influencer said I need to be doing. They look amazing. So I'm going to follow everything they did. When I first started working out, I was doing three days. Well, a week. doing my squats on a BOSU ball. <laughs> <laughs> when I was, when I first started working out, I was working out three days a week. Because my dad would not let me do any more weights aside from that. He said, you can do cardio every day if you want to, but you are not doing weights three days a week or uh, more than three days a week. And here I am, like, I'm looking at, at the time, the big influencer was Jeff Seed and Ziz. Ziz? Ziz? Whatever it was. Um, those were the guys that I was looking at. And they're, like, training six days a week. And I'm like, boy, if I train like them, I'm going to. And I was like, nope, I'm driving you to the gym. If you don't, if you want to get the extra cardio in, you can go do your run outside in the dead of winter and minus 20 degrees. Uh, obviously that didn't happen, but I'm grateful that he did that. It does now. does now. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. But I am grateful that he did it for those three days because I was able to the two weeks in three weeks in, I was tired as hell from those three workouts. And if I didn't have the break in between, I would, I know I wouldn't have gotten my schoolwork done. I wouldn't have been able to do my extracurriculars. My body would have been tired. You know, I wasn't, I wouldn't have been able to recover. And that's what most people come into the gym think they're like, I have to go five days a week. You know, I have to make it like, and this is, it's kind of a oxymoron. What we're saying here is like, make the habit of going to the gym and your diet and like brushing your teeth. You have to do it every day, but you have to do it smart because, you know, you can't just go into the gym every day. You have to, you have to take your rest days sometimes, but, um, well, and, and the thing is too, 90% of the people who go in and they want to do that five days a week don't know how to program themselves anyway. No. So they're going to hurt themselves doing the same exercises over and over and over again without or, any knowledge of periodization or anything else. Or just doing completely different workouts every time yeah. they go in. Yeah, because YouTube says. Yeah, confuse the muscles. Yeah. Put I don't know textbook. about my muscles, but I'm confused. Just put a math textbook in front of your yeah. bicep. Um, yeah, and that's, that's kind of the thing that... Uh, beginners always struggle with and not even just beginners but i like you have people coming back from the pandemic now that are like i i gotta get back into my routine you are not the same person you were two years ago if you have taken two years off a year and a half off or maybe you've been doing all home workouts like five times a week at home it's still going to be different than going into the gym you're not going to be able to go right back into the the gym workouts just because you're doing your home workouts like there is a difference and you have to understand that and you can't just give up. You can't just go balls to the wall. You have to find that happy medium and you have to say, all right, maybe I wash my hair today. You know, I'm in the shower. I'm washing my hair today. The second day I don't need to, cause I need to let those oils build up and that's maybe a rest day or something, but uh, you're the barber. You uh, can uh, explain but, that better than me. Okay. So, so here's what I'm going to put in my two. Yeah, you know, you know how to do it <laughs> as a hairdresser in my past life, you know, we went from a time, and I remember this time, when women did their hair once a week. They went to the salon, they got a set, and it lasted for the week. It looked horrible by the end of the week, but they didn't wash their hair. They went back into the salon and they got it done. And then we trained them, thanks to Mr. Vedal Sassoon, that they needed to blow dry their hair every day, wash their hair every day. Why? So we could sell them conditioner, because they were overwashing their hair every day. And we've come full circle now to where we're saying, don't wash your hair every day. Here's this dry shampoo. Yeah. You know, which is actually the healthier methodology for the health of the hair. Same thing with the body. You overwork it. You aren't getting anywhere. Or if you so overwork it. don't overwork it. Yeah. Work it enough. Work it enough. And that requires you to understand your body a little bit. It's the trial and error. Mm. When you're getting into the gym for the first time, coming back from an injury, coming back from COVID, whatever it might be, you have to go through these processes of trial and error. 
I had to do this was like the biggest thing I haven't taken. I haven't been out of the gym for 10 years until COVID struck. The only times I was ever out of the gym was when I got a cold or, you know, flu or whatever. Um, but that would last like a week. Check. that too. I don't think I've ever talked about that. Maybe that's a good yeah. Uh, podcast. Yeah, that would be. Yes. I've done that. I've been there, done that. <laughs> um, I was out of the gym for a shorter period from that than I was from a cold. That shows you how stupid I am. Um, anyway, so 10 year stretch, COVID happens. Now I'm like, okay, I have to ship to these home workouts. And I thought they were crap. I was like, there's no way I can make them that, can make them that good. Trial and error of two weeks, I figured out a way how to make my home workouts feel pretty good. And part of that was understanding, okay, I maybe need to do a bit more cardio. Maybe I need to do a bit more reps. I need to like take really short rests. Maybe I can do like active rests and jumping jacks in between my sets so I can actually like, you know, get that sweat going and, you know, just whatever. Then it got to the point where gyms were opening back up during that summer period. And I was like, sweet, I can go back in. But man, when I went back in, I was like, I kind of, I kind of liked those active rest periods. And I kind of liked the whole, you know, hit style workout of bodybuilding, I guess, whatever I was doing at the time. So I got into that trial period for the first two weeks of figuring out, okay, how can I use this equipment? How can I use the gym to maintain, like build up the muscle that I'm trying to do for the bodybuilding show, but also make it so I enjoy it. Like I was enjoying the other stuff. Went through that trial period aired. Then I got into another shutdown and same again, trial, the trial and error period. Then I went and did the boxing and it was like, okay, what can I do to fit my boxing workouts in with my weight workouts? And it just, you progress and you have these waves of up and down and no gym routine, no diet routine, no physical fitness or mental health regime will ever be a linear upward progression. You will face those up and downs, probably more downs than you expect. But if you continue on that pattern, yeah, you'll be like the stock market before. And hopefully we're in this analogy, the great depression ever happened. You just keep going up, but you have those yeah. ups and downs. But here's the thing. The downs are the beginning of the greater upward growth. Mm -hmm. Every time when you hit that bottom, when you go through the period of whatever, you come out of it stronger. And I, I said this when I, I posted the thing on Instagram the other day about, so guys, I had COVID for the last two weeks and now I'm okay. And I'm back to work and everything's fine. But, uh, you know, I said, I've got to be okay with this. I've taken some time off work. I haven't worked out. I'm not going to go crazy and go back, which of course I didn't. I ignored entirely. I went back. I had extra time. So I just kept working out. And then felt like crap at the end of the day. Smart, I would have gone, well, you finished your workout, so now you stop. <laughs> yeah. You know, but I didn't. Yeah. Um, we we need to have those downturns to force us to look at what we're doing. Yeah. Rejig everything. You need to have the, the wind hit the side of your plane so you know you have to change direction slightly. Yeah. Um, and I, I think that's the best way to see it. That if you don't have those downturns, you're you're not going to progress. Exactly. At the same and yeah, I mean, again, I'm reading a book right now called Do It Today. And just like every other self-help book, they always talk about taking breaks before you need them. Now as humans, we're pretty stupid. No offense. We are. We do not understand when we actually need to take a rest. We usually work till we're tired. And that's when we should take the rest. But we're like, we can push through this because we live in a society where we have information overload. We can look at our phones and scroll for endless hours. We can go and do work. There's always more that we could be doing. And people are pushing that lifestyle on us. So we keep working until we burn out. And then, yeah, we end up getting sick or whatever might happen. We need to be more than uh, we need to be aware that we need that break or we need that change. Now, the way we're talking about this podcast is more so for that person who wants to get to the gym. They realize they have the change, but maybe let's say you're not that person. Maybe you're listening to this and you're that type of person who hasn't realized yet the importance that fitness can 
have on your lifestyle, the, the healthier meals, uh, a healthy workout routine. You need to realize that you do need a change, but it needs to be within reason. And that's exactly what, what Walter's saying. It needs to be within reason. You can't just go balls to the wall. You can't just say, I'm going to sit at home and take plenty of rest. You, you need to figure out what works for you. You need to have those ups and downs in life so you can come back stronger and better. If you don't, sorry, but there's a shit storm of bad luck coming your way because bad luck is really just, in my opinion, bad luck is really just your own doing. You know? We make our luck. We make our luck. I will briefly talk about luck with, uh, I'll go into my heart thing really quick. I won't talk about what all that happened but yeah i did have a minor heart attack at some point that was a shitty point in my life i was really upset with that because i got into that point where i was like i knew i had a genetic heart issue and i just didn't pay attention to it i wasn't necessarily doing the right things because nobody ever really told me like hey you should be doing this hey you should be doing this i knew what i should have been doing like after i had that diagnosis of a genetic heart issue the doctors didn't really say Hey, you should be doing more cardio, like way more cardio than you think. And you should definitely not be as stressed out as much. How well did that work out for me? <laughs> I ended up with a heart attack. So that's why. Um, but after the fact, I realized, okay, this is really bad. I need to get rid of some, get rid of some stress. I need to have some more mindfulness in my life. Maybe I do need to have a break every, every third week. I need to take a day off and I definitely need to be doing more cardio. And not just walking. I maybe I need to start doing like high intensity 10 minute workouts every day for single morning. And that was what I had to realize because nobody else, guys, is gonna tell you what to do. We're trying to help you. We're gonna give you a we'll give you the toolbox. You have to understand how to use those tools. You have to actually pick them up. Yeah that's actually a better analogy you guys just have to pick them up and figure out how to use them because that's basically yeah. everything in life I mean, I'm I, just gonna I teach you. when my grandfather died I, I got all his tools almost all his tools and they sat in the basement for about 20 years before i thought this is stupid give them to someone else who may want to use them who may actually use them mm -hmm. i was holding on to them because they were his but I had never opened the toolbox. Don't let fitness do the same thing to you guys. Pick up the toolbox, open it, use what you can. Somehow we have to wrap it up with a shower. Yeah. So that's stay clean. And uh, yeah, because you're, you're picking up all this dirty stuff from a toolbox. And there you go. You're working out and stuff. So like, we came full circle at the end of it. <laughs> there you go, guys. Yeah. That's it for today. Again, we apologize for uh, the late upload uh, for last week. Again, Walter, unfortunately, had uh, COVID. So we're back on track. We have more guests coming your way. We have yeah. way more topics coming your way. And of course, the man himself, uh, Terry Frendo, will be joining us very soon. So make sure you spay, uh, pay, stay tuned, man. It's been a long day already. I barely did yeah, anything. Yeah. You, you need a rest. <laughs> you should consider taking a day off. Yeah. <laughs> Terry himself will be joining us. For those who don't know, Terry is the CEO and founder of Inside Fitness Magazine. He has some great insight. We're going to be doing a roundtable yeah. discussion with him. It's going to be it's going to be a lot of fun. So make sure you uh, tune in for that episode. And who knows um, what yeah, we're yeah. going to talk about? Yeah, because I sure as hell don't. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's the beauty of it. It's that's the be. spirit. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he's a good guy, yeah, but. Good. There you go, guys. If you need to uh, send us a message, if you need to ask us a question, comment it below, DM us. You can see our uh, name tags right there. By, uh, by all means, leave us a nasty comment. It improves the algorithm. If you hate us, hate on us more, please, and thank you. If you love us, maybe send us a like. But yeah. <laughs> the hate seems to go a little bit further for some reason. Um, there you go, guys. Sad. It kind of is. Yeah. But at the same time, yeah. it's, it's like, hey, people are listening. You know, There's that, at least. Nice. Yeah. There is no bad uh, press. No. Unless you're um, that's Will, wrong. That is unless, so wrong. Unless you're Will Smith, maybe. <laughs> I feel like that was pretty bad press. That was just yeah. a bad action. Stay safe, guys. Stay breezy. Take care.